Hey guys, this is Nick and welcome to my Linux experiment. GNOME 40 is out now. Well, it should be anytime soon anyways. It's not GNOME 3.40, it's GNOME 40 because it's probably the largest change to the GNOME desktop environment since GNOME 3. So let's take a tour of all the changes right after this. Thanks to Linode for sponsoring this video. Linode is the largest independent cloud service provider, meaning they provide hosting that you can use to run your own servers, whatever you need one for. I use Linode to host my own Nextcloud instance, but thanks to their one-click apps, you can deploy any type of server in, well, in one click. If you're a gamer, you can easily start your own Valheim, Minecraft or CSGO server. But if you're looking for a VPN, you can also one-click deploy your own using WireGuard or OpenVPN, and you can ensure there is no middleman trying to intercept what you're connecting to. Linode is affordable and has consistent pricing with data centers all over the globe. You can upgrade your servers in one click, just as I did on my Nextcloud instance to add more storage, and you have real humans behind it all to talk to 24-7 by phone or support ticket, even if you use the cheapest plan available, which is $5 a month, by the way. They also have very detailed documentation if you don't like talking to other human beings, which I know I'm not a fan of. If you use the link in the description to sign up, you get a $100 credit to use on your own server, so head over there and give it a go. I am certain you won't regret it. Okay, so let's start with the GNOME shell. The shell is probably the place where the most changes have been happening, and from the outside it might look like a complete redesign of how it works. But it's more of an evolution, because you still have the global activities concept with an overview, the workspaces, your windows laid out in the expose view, and a favorites bar. It's still called up with the same way, but the layout is completely different. So the workspaces have moved from the right side of the screen to a horizontal line, just like on Elementary OS's multitasking view. The dock is also now on the bottom of the screen instead of on the left side. This change makes a lot of sense to me. It's way easier to understand where each window is and on which workspace. And these workspaces are now a lot more visible and discoverable. The redesign comes with new trackpad gestures as well, with three finger swipes allowing for easy navigation around the activities view. Drag three fingers up and you open the view. Drag again and you open the app grid. Drag to the right or to the left and you move to the next or the previous workspace. Now it's going to make navigating GNOME Shell on laptops a lot easier, especially since these gestures are one-to-one, -one, which means that the content of the page of the screen moves with your fingers as you swipe the, your fingers across the trackpad. So as you move your fingers from the right to the left, you're going to see the workspace pan out, or at least they are one-to-one -one gestures on Wayland when I tried them on my laptop. Now, if you prefer using keyboard shortcuts, you can use Super to open the overview and Super Alt plus left or right to navigate workspaces. And for people who were used to using Super plus page up and down, as in the previous versions of GNOME, you still can. I personally like the other new method of moving through workspaces, which is Super plus scroll wheel. This lets me keep my hands on the mouse and the keyboard while I use my computer, and that's a very natural way to switch workspaces. Now I really, really like this change because it makes it a lot easier to wrap your head around how the activities view work. There is no longer a disconnect between the windows you see on the overview and the windows you see on the workspaces list. The windows are directly laid on top of the workspace that they're on, which means it's way easier to understand that you can move them from one to the other. It's just more simple. Now all the windows in the overview also have their app icon overlaid on top of them to make them more recognizable, which should help when you have a lot of stuff open at the same time. Now finally, using a G settings key which is not accessible directly in the settings, you can also tweak that behavior to make sure that all the workspaces are visible on all your displays. If you use a multi-monitor setup, this means that you can switch workspaces from any monitor instead of just on the main one. Now, as per the app grid, it also now scrolls horizontally instead of vertically, and the labels for applications can now sit on multiple lines when you hover over them instead of being truncated, which is a lot better and a lot more legible. Now, this view is so nice that it's even going to be the first thing you see after you boot. Now, that's one last step to open an app when you boot up your computer. You immediately have access to the dock to launch an app immediately, or you can just type the name of the app you want to start. Now, speaking of the dock, it has changed a bit as well. Your favorite shortcuts are now separated from the apps that are running, but aren't in your favorites. There's a separator between them, 
and of course you can drag the apps to the favorite side of the dock to add them there. Now that's for the functional changes. It might seem like a lot, but in use it's actually the exact same thing as you were used to. It's just a, a matter of relearning muscle memory to reach out for the dock on the bottom of the screen instead of on the left, but the keyboard shortcuts are the same and the behavior is the same. Now the shell also has some touch-ups visually, with a new pill style when you click elements in the top bar. They are now highlighted with a nice round shape on hover and on click, which I find very pleasing, but your mileage may vary. In terms of look and feel in general, GNOME 40 moves a lot of applications and things to GDK 4, the latest version of the toolkit used to build GNOME and its apps. GDK 4 enables hardware accelerated animations and transitions, and also rounded corners for Windows, so you'll see a lot of that everywhere. Most default apps, menus, and lists now use rounded corners on all corners. I personally like it, but that's a matter of taste. Now, scroll bars also have been made a bit larger, so using them with a mouse should be easier. Now, GNOME 40 doesn't stop at the shell, though. The default applications have also seen a lot of improvements. Now, the file manager, Nautilus, now has the ability to show a creation date column in the list view by right-clicking on the column header, and this column can be used to sort the files. This seems like it should have been there from the start, but at least it's there now. It can also autocomplete when you're typing a path in the URL bar. For people who don't know, you can actually type a path in there by pressing Ctrl plus L. Now, Nautilus will autocomplete what you type, so you can go a bit faster. The Nautilus preferences have also been redesigned and have a more understandable layout. When you move or rename a file in Nautilus, if the name conflicts with an existing file, it will offer an alternative name instead of just refusing to rename or to move your file. And you will also be able to extract password-protected archives directly from Nautilus, which is nice. But the most interesting change for us nerds in Nautilus will be the ability to choose whether to run or edit a script file in the right-click menu. You now get to choose if you want to open the script with a text editor, or if you want to run it as a program. In that case, it will open in a terminal so you can look at the output. Now on GNOME software, the update reminders won't be visible as often to avoid nagging you too much. Critical updates will still generate reminders, but will also be more clearly identified. On the home page, the carousel of apps will now automatically cycle between apps and respond to swipe gestures using the trackpad. On app pages, you'll also have a new version history dialog to look at the various updates an app has received in the past. Oh yeah, and GNOME software also has a brand new icon. Nice. Epiphany, or GNOME Web if you prefer, has also received a new application icon and some brand new tabs. This new tab widget will allow for way better control, like pinning tabs, seeing which tabs require action, allowing to mute them, see which one play audio. It's just a more comprehensive tab widget, and it will be available for other GNOME apps that need it. This is pretty cool, because web browser-like tabs were implemented individually per applications on GNOME because the tab widget just didn't really work that well. And this meant that there were a lot of different tab implementations, and that theme makers, for example, had to tweak their themes for every single one of these custom-made widgets. Now, everyone can reuse the style that Epiphany uses, which means that theme makers can just support this tab widget and expect that other apps will automatically look good as well. Epiphany also has experimental web extensions control, which means that in near future, it should be able to access a lot more extensions, which will probably make it a way better choice on GDK desktops as a default browser. Now finally, GNOME Web will also support Google suggestions when typing in the URL bar. But don't worry, it's disabled by default and can be enabled using a toggle in the preferences. Now to complete this store, we have GNOME Maps, which has a redesigned places card in desktop and in mobile view, which has more information, a better layout, and a sensible behavior on mobile devices with a smaller card popping up from the bottom of the screen that expands upon being clicked. And finally, GNOME Weather has also received a whole new interface, which looks pretty nice to me. Now the settings also have received some attention in GNOME 40. First, the input settings have been moved to the region and language settings to the keyboard settings, which makes a lot more sense. The keyboard shortcut settings have also been improved with smaller shortcut groups to help you find what you're looking for, and this is nicely supplemented by a revamped search, which should help as well. You can now also enable the Compose key, which lets you type some special symbols and characters. The Wi-Fi list has also been improved with a new sorting method. You'll see on the top the network that you're connected to, then the ones that you previously connected to but are not connected to now, and finally, the ones that are available but you never connected to, ranked by signal strength. 
Finally, the About page now shows your hardware model, if it is available, which should help OEMs display some relevant information when shipping hardware with GNOME pre-installed. And that's it for the most prominent changes for desktop users. GNOME 40 is probably the single biggest update to the GNOME desktop environment since GNOME 3, but if you were already a GNOME user, you shouldn't be afraid, because it will only take a few hours for your muscle memory to kick into action and to stop moving your mouse to the left to go to the dock and instead move it to the bottom. That's about it. The rest is super intuitive, your keyboard shortcuts haven't changed, and it generally looks a lot better, it's a lot smoother, it's just a more mature version of what we were used to. If you're using GNOME, there is no reason not to move to GNOME 40. If you didn't like GNOME before, there's probably nothing here that will make you change your mind, but it might be worth a shot just for the looks and the feel alone of using it. It's a very nice release. And that's it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, don't stay to like or dislike if you didn't. You can also subscribe and turn on notifications to get more videos like this one. And if you prefer watching my videos somewhere else, I'm also on library. I left a link in the description below. For those who want to support the channel, you can join my amazing Patreon subscribers and YouTube members and get access to a weekly Patreon cast and the right to vote on the next topics I'll cover. Now, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!